were in cell 3. When the charged particle, they start to be separated inside and outside, and this charged particle have charge, of course. So uh, like sodium is high sodium outside, and potassium is high potassium inside. Chloride, negative charge, so chloride go hand in hand with sodium. So high sodium outside, high chloride inside. And this separation not just create concentration gradient, it also create an electrical gradient because this particle have charge. So this will be our main focus today. It create a membrane potential. And membrane potential, you put electro into the cell and you measure, it's like a voltage meter. You measure the inside relative to the outside. And you found inside is a little bit more negative. It's minus 70 millivolt. So it's minus 0 0.07 volt. And this voltage is due to the ions, those charged particle separation. And in the cells, it actually look like this. So you have a lot of ions inside and outside. So we, we select a specific part of the membrane to look at. Inside has is more negative compared with outside. So the inside is about minus 70 millivolt. How this happen? Because sodium potassium pump. Last time we talked about this. This is a primary active transporter. We use ATP as an energy source. So every time it works, it pumps two potassium in and three sodium out. So it pumps potassium in, pumps sodium out. But they don't pump them equally. It pumps only two potassium and three sodium. So they pump two positive charge in and three positive charge out. So every time it works, it actually creates a negative one. And it, this, I, uh, last time I said this is like the AC. It works 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So turn out the inside become more negative compared with outside. And you can watch this YouTube. It will tell you uh, this pump again. And you say this one keep working, we overdo it. So inside become minus 700 millivolt and kill the cell. The answer is no. And the reason is because we have leak channel. So we have the leak potassium channel and leak sodium channel. The sodium potassium pump in previous slides, it keep pumping potassium in. But once you have too much potassium inside, some of them gonna leak out through the potassium leak channel. So that's the main one to balance uh, the voltage. And the second one, sodium leak channel. So if you have too much sodium outside, uh, you're, gonna, you're gonna leak in. So eventually, because of these three membrane proteins, Sodium potassium pump number one, potassium leak channel number two, sodium leak channel number three. It turned out the we call the resting membrane potential, the voltage inside the cell is very stable. It's about minus 70 millivolt. So we'll talk about this again in unit four in the neuron. So the difference of the membrane potential is due to the ion separation. So if you have less ion separation, the voltage is less, and more separation, and the voltage and the voltage difference is bigger. And when they reach a stable state, we call the resting membrane potential. So that's a normal situation of the living cell. Inside become more negative, and outside become more positive. And inside has high potassium, outside have high sodium and high chloride. And if you really put electro into the cell, you measure the voltage is about minus 70 millivolt in neuron. Uh, in unit three, when we talk about the muscle, muscle is a little bit more. Muscle will be minus 90 millivolt. Okay, let's look at the, uh, the connection with cells communication. So some cells, they have this kind of structure, they call the gap junction. Uh, in the muscle, sorry, not muscle, in the, in the cardiac muscle, it's not muscle, not skeletal muscle, cardiac muscle, they have the gap junction. So they are able to let the, the heart, when the heart work, cardiac muscle, they work like one cell. Uh, they all work together. So all the heart muscle, they, they beep, beat together, they contract together. And the reason is those electrical signal, those ions, are able to go through the gap junction from the muscle cell one, skeletal muscle one to uh, not, not skeletal muscle, sorry, a cardiac muscle one to the cardiac muscle two and to the whole heart muscle. So they have the gap junction. Uh, we also have the gap junction in the skin, epithelium tissues. They they glue the cell together. So we have this short distance communication. 
we also have the indirect chemical communication, like a neuron that releases neurotransmitter, or the endocrine cells release the hormones. So they carry by the blood, we call them hormone. Uh, when we talk about the neurons, we have a special one, we call the neural hormone. They are actually chemical molecules released by neurons uh, from the posterior pituitary gland. And we have two neural hormones, oxytocin and vasopressin, that release the blood. So we have this neuron, we have the hormone, we also have something in between. And these are the indirect uh, communication. And in AP2, you learn the digestive system. They have a lot of local signal. We call them paracrine. So they were released. Still chemical signal. It's picked up by the local cell. And this kind of signal apparently released from the, uh, the cells need to reach the target cells. So they need to go through, we call them signal transduction. They need to bind with the receptor and trigger a sequence of response inside the cell, we call them signal transduction. And you can click the YouTube, watch the signal transduction. So let's look at the, the stimulus first. What, what kind of chemical message? And we put them into two different categories. One is water soluble, the other is lipid soluble. And you guess why we put them into these two categories? Because of cell membrane, because cell membrane is lipid. So uh, the way they go through the cells are different if it's lipid soluble compared with water soluble. So most of the uh, proteins, they are water soluble, like the neurotransmitter, all of them belong to this category. Lipid soluble, most of the hormones, except steroid hormones. So steroid hormones are made of steroid. Steroid is a lipid. So they are lipid uh, solubles. And also the thyroid hormone, thyroid hormone T3, T4, released from the thyroid glands. They also the lipid soluble one. And if it's a lipid soluble molecule, it has no problem go through the cell membrane by simple diffusion. They're gonna go from high to low simple diffusion. So they put the receptor inside the cell. We call it intracellular receptor. If it's water soluble molecule. Well, this molecule could not go through the cell membrane like a neurotransmitter. If you put the receptor inside, they will never bind with the receptor because this molecule could not go through the cell membrane. So they need to put the receptor on the cell membrane. We call them a membrane-bounded receptor. So that's the different mechanism. So for the water-soluble messenger, they will bind with the membrane receptor, receptor located on the cell membrane. And we put those receptors in three different categories. So some of them are channel, so they can open close the ion channel. The second category is enzyme, so they will uh, trigger the chemical response inside the cell. And the third category, we've got a G-protein coupled receptor. We're going to focus on this one, talk about this one. So these are the three categories. Channel, enzyme, and G protein couple receptor. So the first one is channel. And a lot of neurotransmitters they belong to this category. So they will bind with the receptor and the receptor is ion channel. So when it binds with the receptor, it opens the ion channel. And when the ion channel open, the ions usually is sodium. And it's high outside, low inside, it will go through the sodium channel and move in inside, and you will change the voltage inside. And this is the main function of the uh, voltage, uh, ligand-gated, chemically-gated receptor channel. And the second one is uh, enzyme, and we know the enzymes, it will trigger the chemical response inside the cell, so they can activate enzymes. And let's look at the third one. The third one, the receptor, is a G-protein coupled receptor. So they will activate G-protein. The receptor have a, have a G-protein bind with it. And when the signal comes, it will bind with the G-protein coupled receptor, and now the G-protein will be activated. When the G-protein being activated, it will go to activate the second molecule inside the cell, usually we call the second messenger. And the second messenger 
will do something inside the cell. It can activate the third messenger or it can do something else. So one trigger the second, the second trigger the third, we got a cascade effect. And also they can talk to more than two or more than one second messenger. It can talk to two and these two second messenger can talk to four. So it can amplify the signal. We call the signal transduction. It happens in a G protein couple receptor. So you can look at this YouTube video and uh, watch the, the signal transduction. And those second messenger, uh, you are required to memorize those second messenger. The most common one is cyclic, cyclic, uh, cyclic AMP. So most cells use cyclic AMP as a second messenger. It's like you go to the spy movie, every time you see James Bond, you know, oh, that's a spy. Uh, cyclic AMP is the most famous second messenger. So every time you see cyclic AMP, you know this these cells use G protein couple receptor and it will trigger a signal transduction. That's your thinking logic. And sometimes they use cyclic GMP. So like if you don't like James Bond, you may like Ethan Hunt, okay, Mission Impossible. It's still a spy. Well there's another second messenger, cyclic GMP. Uh, when we talk about Unit 5, the visual system, the rods and cones, actually they use the cyclic GMP as a second messenger. Calcium is the second messenger used by the muscle, so calcium will trigger the muscle contraction. IP3, DAG are similar to uh, used by the muscle. So all these are the second messenger system. For the lipid soluble chemicals like steroid hormone, uh, they, they are different mechanisms. And those lipid, they they well, they need to be carried by the membrane, by the plasma protein, because they have difficulty dissolve in water. the The blood, the plasma part is mainly water, so they have those. Uh, you have the plasma protein mainly designed to carry those steroid hormone, and when they reach the target, simple diffusion. They have no problem go through the cell membrane by simple diffusion from the high concentration to the low concentration concentration area without any helper. So their receptors are inside the cell, in the cytosol, sometimes inside the nucleus. And when they bind with the receptor, this receptor is so close to the nucleus. So most of them will go inside the nucleus and trigger the transcription, translation of the DNA. And after that, you produce the new protein. So for the lipid-soluble uh, hormone, usually their response is a new protein synthesis. So that's the lipid-soluble chemical. Uh, pathway. So they will go through the cell membrane, through the simple diffusion, and trigger transcription, translation, and usually response is the new protein synthesis. Compared with the G protein couple receptor, usually their response is activate existing protein inside the cell. And uh, you can click this, watch the cyclic AMP, that's the second messenger. Okay, that's it.